Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. In this one we are going to talk about the factory pattern in JavaScript. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please do it right now because it really helps the channel grow and basically helps us push the content to all the developers out there for free. So without further ado, let's get started. Awesome. So this is the application that we are dealing with right now. It's essentially a really simple application. If I go to app.js, I can essentially show you that we have this to-do list component, which is being used two times in this app.js. Now, since they are being used two times, we can see that there are two instances. And if I click on any one of them, you can see that both of them essentially show the data that we are pushing to them. And that is because in the previous video, we implemented a singleton pattern for this to do store that we are using right now. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to get rid of this commented code so we can see things easier. Now you can see that we are using a simple object here that we are exporting as a default and that object ends up inside this app.js which essentially gets the to-dos from there and then assigns it here. And then we essentially pass this to-dos into this to-do list component. Now let's talk about the factory pattern. So the factory pattern is a pattern in which we use factory functions to create new objects, which means that instead of using classes and constructors, we essentially use functions to create those objects. And that's what we are going to do in this particular example. So we already have this to-dos and you can see that here in this to-dos array, we essentially save the to-dos text. Let's say we wanted to change the requirement a bit. And for this one, we now require this to-do to be an object instead of a really simple string. So what I want to do is that I want to essentially create a factory pattern here or essentially a factory function here. We'll call it something like const create to do's. And here we are going to take to do text similar to what we have right now. Once we get this text, I'm going to use essentially the arrow function for this. And then we are returning an object here, which means that every time this function is called, we return a new object. That object will contain a text property, which will be the to do text. It would also have an ID, which we can call something like date.now. And we could also have a function that we can call something like delete to do. So I could say something like delete or actually delete self. Now this delete self method would try to delete itself from the to do's and that's going to be the fun part. So what I want right now is to refactor this a bit to say something like const id equals to and then I'm going to use date dot now right here. Then I'm going to just pass this as an id and now I can use this delete self method to try to delete this particular to do that we are talking about from this to do's array and I can do that by doing something like to do's dot splice so I could say to do's dot splice here we can try to find the index of this particular to do that we are talking about and then removing it so I can say something like index I don't have that right now but I could say one here since we want to remove one item from the index of this to do so I'm going to say something like const and index and here we could say something like to do start find index and here we can pass this so let's say we call this item and then we can say something like return item dot id equals to id now you know that we don't have this item dot id so far but we are actually implementing it here so now every to do would start having this id and if it matches this one that we just assigned to this object then it's going to just remove this so we are essentially creating a closure with this function but that's a completely different topic let's focus on this factory pattern which is this create to do's so now instead of pushing this to do text directly I should be using create to do's and here I can pass to do text which means that every new to do that we are going to push right now is going to be an object so if I just do this, I'm also going to just log or I think we are already logging the to do's. So if I add one, you see that we essentially log it, but we also get some errors. So I'm going to fix that. But you can see that this array, this to do's array now contains an object instead of a simple text. And this object contains the ID, the text and the delete self method, which would delete it if we called it. Now, you know that this is not a string anymore and it's an object. That's why we are getting an error because inside this to-do list, we are looping over the to-dos, but we are directly printing out the to-do. Instead of to-do, we should be saying to-do.txt and that would make more sense. And you can see that now this is fixed. So I can add more to-dos and you can see that they both are, uh, or these both instances of the components are showing the to-do out of the box, which is what we wanted. 
right now if i wanted to say that hey if i just mouse over over this and click this then that particular element should be deleted from the to do's that's what we are going to do so we already have this ally which is essentially this particular element so we are looping over the to do's array and each ally is one to do if i right click and inspect this you can see that we have each ally here so what i can do is that i can simply go ahead and in this on click i could say that hey just call to do dot delete self and that should be enough if i just save this and try this out let's see what happens if i remove two two three you see nothing actually changed but something actually did if i click add to do you see the change now and that is because after we are deleting this we are not re-rendering the application again so in order to reflect that change in the react dom what we need to do is to call this set to do's just like this just like when we do after adding a to do so now if i do this let's see what happens if i click to one nine you can see that it's gone from both instances because it essentially gets removed from this to do's array and this whole to do store it's a singleton object that's why it reflects on both of the sites and now everything works as expected so in general if i want to summarize what we just did is that we created this create to do's function using the factory pattern because this is a factory function that is a factory of these new objects to be created the whole focus of this pattern is essentially this whole function and this object that is being returned this delete self it's sort of an additional thing that you learned right now i want to also share one more thing before saying that hey this is all the focus of this video what we just discussed that is the end of the scope but i also want to tell you something important with this one and that is when we create this function it essentially comes here and this declares a new delete self as a closure which has access to this to do's array so what happens is that whenever you create a new store or not the store but whenever we create a new to do we have a copy of this delete self method for that to do how do i know if i go ahead and inspect this let's see what happens if i add a new to do here you will see that if i open this i can see the first item having this delete self and the second item having this delete self now what i want to do is actually to go inside this js if i could but i don't really think i could so what i want to do is maybe do something like hey i could go here and log this but also let's do something here so we could say something like window dot to do's equals store dot get to do's i'm just putting this for debugging purposes now if i save this and try this again we already have the to do's object here and if i see you can see that we have the error here and I can check here that, hey, is the first to do delete self, which is a function, does that equal the delete self of the second one? So I could do something like triple equals and here I can check one. If I do this, you see that we get a false. And as I said, that is because although these this looks like that this is a function and then we have a function declaration here this function is a copy for every to do out there if we used the constructor pattern here with an es6 class this would have been different let me quickly show you so if i go ahead and say something like const to do as a class or actually not const to do but class to do and here i replicate the same scenario which is that i have a constructor and in the constructor we are trying to get the to do text so i'm going to get this to do text here and then i'm going to just assign the id so I'm going to say something like uh, instead of const id we could say this dot id here and then here we could do something like hey uh, this dot text equals to do text and then it's all about the final delete self method so i could actually copy this as it is and i could go ahead and after the constructor i can paste this and now i want to change something here and that is instead of saying id i could say this dot id and i think we should be good apart from this i think everything looks good so i'm going to actually comment this now and instead use this to do constructor for this example so instead of this push what i want to do is that i can say to do's dot push and here i could say something like new to do and here i can say to do text so if i pass this let's see if this works so i'm going to save this and if i click here you can see that the to do was added right here and if i go forward you can see that we got more to do's here so it's working as expected can we delete a to do let's try it out so if i click 247 boom it's gone 170 boom it's gone now if i add let's say two more to do's and if i want to check the same thing i want to check hey is the delete self method of the first to do 
equal to the delete self method of the second to do and you see true why that is because if i open this and if i open this to do you don't see the delete self method here or here but if i open the prototype that's where i would see it so if i go to this console which is the actual console and not this sort of simulator i can go ahead and check this out so if i click here and here you can see that i can see in the prototype this delete self method similarly i can go here and check the delete self method and this one also has this so the fun fact here is that when we use an es6 class the function declaration or actually not this one but this es6 class the function declaration inside there is shared among all the instances of this to do which means that it would take lesser memory compared to this function pattern but again the function pattern might be useful in some of the cases especially when you are not creating for example closures or functions but you are doing something magic you're encapsulating stuff inside there or you're creating plain object for example and now you can decide when to use which sort of pattern or technique so i hope you found this video useful and in fact this series very useful if you did press the thumbs up button subscribe to the channel if you have not already share this video with others that you think might get benefit from this one let me know in the comments which sort of patterns you want me to try out we are most likely going to implement further patterns also in the react application let me know how you feel about it in the chat and as always happy coding and i'm going to see you in the next one